When new books are released, there are always tons of cool little facts that don't really fit anywhere in a video of their own that I still think are interesting and worth talking about. So here's a list of facts, small connections, references, and pieces of trivia from Leia, Princess of Alderaan. Be aware that spoilers for the book are ahead. The heir to the throne of Alderaan has to declare their right to the throne on the Day of Demand. The position of queen or king was not merely inherited, it had to be earned. In ancient days, that included combat of some sort as a sign of strength. In Leia's time, she had to undergo challenges of mind, body, and spirit. During her day of demand, Leia wields a ceremonial blade called the Rindon Sword. That was also the name of a sword that appeared multiple times throughout the Chronicles of Narnia. It took more than a thousand years to build the Palace of Alderaan. New chambers were added every few decades. This book features Breha Organa prominently in what might be her largest role in any Star Wars story, both canon and legends. This is only her second real appearance in the Star Wars canon. As queen, Breha tended to Alderaan itself, while Bail represented its interest in the Senate. One of her biggest responsibilities was to oversee all of Alderaan's accounts and funding of public works. This allowed her to funnel money into the growing rebellion. It's also mentioned that Breha was in an accident when she was a teenager that required her heart and lungs to be replaced by artificial organs called pulmonodes. Leia visits the planet Wobani before it becomes a prison camp. It was once an average but lively world until Palpatine enacted the Commodities Enhancement Program, which put in place impossible quotas for the farmers until they were forced to sell their land to the Empire. Wobani then collapsed into the state we see in Rogue One. This is also very similar to what happened to the Price Mine of Lothal in the book Thrawn. Captain Ramus Antilles of the Tanta V4 makes multiple appearances and mentions that he saw combat before. This could be a reference to the fight in the book Ahsoka, or maybe he fought directly in the Clone Wars as well. Vice Admiral Holdo is introduced as a teenage girl. Her real name is Amelin Holdo from Gadolinta, a planet first mentioned in Bloodline, another book by Claudia Gray. Some of the more wealthy citizens on Coruscant dabbled in an odd fashion choice. They would have temporary extra body parts like tails bioengineered under their figure. They wouldn't last more than a few months before, I guess, falling off. Leia met Tarkin for the first time at the age of 16. Her reputation for finding legal loopholes preceded her, and he remarked on her talent of finding and exploiting weaknesses. It's a nice nod to their future relationship. Tarkin has a few scenes with the Organa family, and they are all at least a little terrifying. Leia's love interest in the book is a fellow Alderanian named Kir Domati. He likes studying history, specifically the Clone Wars era. He's literally a Star Wars nerd within Star Wars, and he's wonderful. At one point, Kir tells Leia she did a good job, and she replies, I know. I like Kir and all, but she and Han are perfect for each other. Leia first hears about and visits the planet Crate in this book, suspecting it has something to do with insurgent attacks on the Empire. She investigates, and it turns out that's where she first learns that her family is involved with the Rebellion. Leia also visits one of the moons orbiting Naboo. Seeing the planet gives her an unexpected pang of sadness, although she can't pinpoint why. A new queen of Naboo is introduced named Dalne. The position of queen is now ceremonial, with all governmental control passing to the regional governor. That governor is Moff Panaka. Yes, that Panaka. His rank of Moff was something established in Legends and was also mentioned in a canon reference book, but this is the first actual story source that provides confirmation. Leia needs a change of clothes, and Queen Dalne offers her a dress, the description of which sounds very similar to the dress worn by Padme at the end of The Phantom Menace. When Panaka sees Leia for the first time and she's wearing that dress, he briefly mistakes her for Padme and is visibly shaken. He does some digging into her adoption, and it's very likely he discovered her true identity. He is then conveniently assassinated by a member of Saw Gerrera's partisans, whose description sounds like two tubes. C-3PO appears in one scene to help Leia with etiquette on the planet Chal Hutta. She is acquainted with 3PO at this point, but not overly so. Leia sees falsified images of Palpatine on Coruscant portraying him as a younger man, something we also saw in Star Wars Rebels. Most everyone knows the images are altered since he hasn't appeared to have aged in 20 years. 
When Breha learns of Leia's feelings for Kier, she jokes that he's a nice boy, but it can be good for girls to fall for scoundrels on occasion. Leia meets R2-D2 for the first time, and it's downright adorable. She notes how much personality and initiative he has, possibly setting her up to choose him for a very important mission only three years later. Even before Leia is fully accepted as part of the Rebellion, she can see that Mon Mothma may be the person for the Uprising to rally behind. Senators Pamlo and Vaspar, who can be seen at the Yavin base in Rogue One, both make brief appearances throughout the book. In a tense moment, Leia unknowingly uses the Force to save Kier and herself from harm. Before doing so, she mentions that she has a good feeling about this, a fun spin on a familiar Star Wars catchphrase. An early rebel shipyard is revealed around the planet Pocris Major, where Clone Wars era ships were refurbished to be used against the Empire. Leia witnesses a senator making a shady deal to sell a large amount of quadanium steel to an Imperial in a white uniform who is referred to only as Director. Considering the whole of the Death Star is made of quadanium, it's only logical that the unknown character is Director Orson Krennic. Leia attends a ball for graduates of the Imperial Academy on Coruscant. It's not specifically stated, but I believe that to be the same ball attended by Thane Kyrell and Sienna Ree in another Claudia Gray Star Wars book, Lost Stars. Leia also likely saw the Millennium Falcon on Coruscant as she tried to hire a freighter for fast passage. It's only described as a YT freighter that looked like it could use some money for repairs, but come on, it's the Falcon. The freighter she winds up hiring is called the Moa, and it's mentioned having an Ithorian crew member. In Lost Stars, Thane Kyrell spends time on a ship called the Mighty Oak Apocalypse, which went by Moa for short, and had an Ithorian crew member named Methwat. It's very likely these are the same ships. Near the end of the book, Leia puts a lock of Kier's brown hair into her keepsake box. Shortly after, she gives the box to her father, who claims he will take good care of it in a tone that made her wonder what he meant. Now let's jump back to over a year ago when Claudia Gray's book Bloodline was released. Bale hid a message for Leia about Vader being her birth father in that box where it remained for decades. When someone else recovered the box, they looked through it, and there's a lock of dark brown hair tied at either end with a ribbon. It's something so small that blew me away. How did Claudia Gray plan that? Over a year in advance! It's possible she knew she would be writing this story next, but still, that is some impressive foresight. This is my favorite easter egg in the book, even though it's such a minor moment. But that's it for random facts from Leia, Princess of Alderaan. If you're interested in checking out this story for yourself, the audiobook is out now, and you can get it for free by clicking on the link in the description or by going to www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. If you sign up for a trial, you'll get a credit for one free book and you can use it on Leia, or a number of other Star Wars books, or get any book you want. The point is, you get a free book and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to see new Star Wars videos every single day, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.